For this lesson, we're going to start looking in the book. This is the Alfred All-in-One series, Piano Book, uh, Level 1. And we're going to start by looking at pages 12 and 13. So let's begin with the right hand position. So when you're looking at the hand, it's important to understand that each of the fingers receives a corresponding number that we're going to use under a topic called uh, fingering in, uh, for the keyboard. So the thumb is finger number one, the pointer finger is finger number two, the middle finger is finger number three, the, and you can see it's hard to lift this one up by itself, the ring finger is number four, and the pinky is number five. The reason that it's hard to separate the fourth and the fifth fingers, the, again, the ring finger and the uh, pinky finger, is because there's a tendon that connects them. So this is completely natural to feel that they are connected and that you don't have as much independence with these two as you do with the first three. Again, finger number one, two, and three. The same thing is true for the left hand. Again, the thumb is finger number one, pointer is number two, middle is number three, ring finger is number four, and your pinky is number five. But we're going to get to the left hand later. Let's begin with page 12 where it gives you a right hand warm up. So review the previous lessons where you know that this is middle C or C4 and what we're going to do is we're going to begin with a position called the five finger position on middle C for the right hand. So the thumb, first finger, is on middle C and then you're going to place the remaining four fingers of your hand all in stepwise relationship to middle C. So we're just going to go up by step. Your second finger is on D, your third finger is on E, your fourth finger is on F, and your fifth finger is on G. So this position, one, two, three, four, five, from C4 through G4, is the five finger position on middle C. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the right hand warm up at the bottom of page 12. So as you can see, it's giving you the, the note heads on the staff with the treble clef. Again, make sure to review the previous lessons on notation. And you can see that all of these uh, note heads are not just note heads, but they're also filled in, meaning they're completely uh, black with uh, the letters written in. And they also have these lines that extend upward from the note head. These lines are called stems. So we have a note head and a stem, and this is actually the specific shape of something known as a quarter note. A quarter note is a durational designation. It's a, an example of rhythm, which basically amounts to timing. So the important thing for this particular lesson is that each of the note heads, as you can see from line number one uh, on the bottom of page 12, uh, you see a series of one, two, three, four, five, and again, one, two, three, four, five for the fingers, or C, D, E, F, G, twice over, right, C, D, E, F, G, uh, all of those note heads look the same. They're not on the same position on the staff because they're different pitches, right? But they do look the same in terms of the fact that the note head is filled in and has a stem. So what this means is that, is that they're all to be played at the same time uh, relative to one another. Let, let me take that back. Not at the same time, but they're all to, to be played um, durationally the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to just set up what's called a beat. So I'm going to give you a kind of a pulse. So each one of these snaps represents the amount of time that you will play each one of those notes. So let me switch over to my left hand. Getting a little hard to snap here, but one, two, three, like that. So this represents the beat and each one of these snaps is going to correspond to me playing one of these notes. So, for example, if I play one, two, three, four, five, where each note corresponds to a snap, it'll sound like this. Okay, now the snapping is not going as well for me, so why don't I just provide some sort of um, other externalized beat source? So, I'm gonna do that one more time. Ready? And. As you can see, I've played the first line 
of three on the bottom of page 12 for what's called the right hand C position or the five finger position on middle C. Let's try the same thing for line number two where the sequence of fingers or fingering is five, four, three, two, one, twice over or G, F, E, D, and C. So let's do that. So as you noticed in the previous example, I set up what's called a series of preparatory beats. I went like this and I said, ready, and, and then on the next beat, I started playing. So let's do this. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna count one, two, ready, and, and then start. So you do this with me. Let's do line number two. One, two, ready, and. Okay. And then let's do line number three, which is as you can see by the sequence of numbers indicated, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. So let's do that. One, two, ready, and. Okay, very good. Let's turn to page 13. So page 13 introduces that quarter note, which is what I mentioned to you before, which remember, it looks like a note head that's completely filled in, it's dark inside, and it has that line that extends from it, which is called a stem. The half note, on the other hand, is another kind of rhythm or duration where the note head is not filled in, it's what's called an open note head, but you see the stem is still there. This is at the top of page 13. Now, what's the difference? The difference is a quarter note in, within the confines of what we're doing here gets a count of one, right? As I was counting before, you notice that with every number, I played a note. So I went one, two, three, okay? So this receives a count of one. The half note receives two of those counts. So for example, if I were to play two half notes in that cycle of four that I was counting, right? One, two, three, four it would sound like this, two numbers per note. So ready, and one, two, three, four. Okay, pretty simple, right? Two counts for the half note, one count for the quarter note. There'll be some lessons on rhythm and meter that you can review uh, later. Uh, but for now, if you look at the bottom of page 13, you see that we're introduced to this uh, really well-known melody the uh, Ode to Joy theme from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, specifically from the uh, chorale movement or the choral movement, the last, uh, the last movement of four. And uh, this is a pretty well-known theme. It sounds like this. And so on. I'm sure you've heard this. If you haven't, we're going to play it together now. But I want you to notice a couple of things that are new. So if you look at this, one thing you can see is that here again, we have the treble clef, so you know what this means. That means that the second line is going to be G4, and then you'll be able to derive the other note head names accordingly. But you can see that there are four quarter notes, and then there's this line, and then there are another four quarter notes, and there's a line. And then the same thing for this measure of space. And then finally, in this fourth group, there are one, two, three note heads indicated, but the third one is a half note. What that means is that it takes the place of two quarters, right? Two counts, as you can see here above. Now, these lines, as it says right here, these are called bar lines or measure lines. Essentially, think of them as visual breaks so that we can see a group of four very clearly. So here's a group of four quarters, another group of four quarters, again, four quarters, and here, the equivalent durationally of four quarters because we count one, two, three, four for that half note. So each of these units is called a measure. This vertical line is called a bar line or a measure line. And the measure measures a group of four quarter notes or their durational equivalent. 
So when we play this, when we get to the fourth measure here, and we're going to read music like this, just like on the previous page, left to right and top to bottom. So as so, soon as we get to the end of this fourth measure, one, two, three, four, we're going to continue down, and this is measure number five, six, seven, and eight. All right, so let's try this together. So this is what it's going to sound like. So I give, I give you my preparatory beats, right? I'm going to count one, two, ready, and, and then start. Remember that each one of these numbers represents, or each one of these counts, is one per quarter, two for the half note. So here we go. One, two, ready, and. So what you also notice here is that at the end of the uh, composition, there is a double bar line, right? That's exactly what that's called. And that always signals the end, either of a section or of an entire piece of music. In this case, this is our piece of music. So this section, this signals the end of it. So let's keep going. And this will be for another lesson.